I'm too scared to live in the same house with her. Send the cursed child away. My heart shattered when my dad pushed me out of his house and his life, believing Melinda's words. I went over to my aunt's. She was disappointed in me, but also in my dad, who she thought was stupid. We let my grandparents in on everything, and they stormed my dad's house. Hello, I'm Liz, a real estate agent and restaurant owner. 10 years ago, I lost my mom. Prior to her death, our family was a happy one. My parents were the best. Their love story was interesting. My mom was an introvert who spent most of her time in the library, while my dad was an extrovert who was always partying. After college, my mom got a job at a high-class restaurant as a chef, while my dad started his own company. They'd both met one day, when my dad and his workers came to have lunch at the restaurant my mom worked in. They'd enjoyed the meal so much that my dad had asked to see the chef to personally thank her. Another time, they happened to come across each other at the beach some other time and exchanged contacts. What started as a normal friendship soon progressed to a romantic relationship six months later. They were head over heels in love with each other. They would go on dates, have fun, and simply enjoy each other's presence. Eventually, after one year and a couple of months later, my dad proposed marriage, and my mom was the happiest woman when he did. I can remember her wide smiles whenever she told me about that special day. After the proposal, he took her to see his parents, and they loved her. My mom was an orphan, and my dad's parents were kind enough to never make her feel that. Even at the wedding, she never felt the absence of her parents. There was love overflowing from every corner. According to my parents, my birth completed them. My mom had stopped working to make time for me. No, my dad didn't make her stop. She wanted to fully enjoy motherhood. Our family was beautiful. I attended the best school. I wore beautiful clothes and ate whatever I wanted. My parents spoiled me. Of course, not too much so I didn't turn out bad. I loved my family and prayed daily to end up with a man like my father. That wish died though. I was 15 when things began to go bad. My mom was sick. She began to look weak and grow lean. When it started, my dad was away on a six month business trip. My mom didn't tell him about what was going on. She made him believe that everything was fine, but the opposite was the case. My mom wasn't doing well. Twice I caught her throwing up. And when I looked, there was blood there. On different occasions, she had to rush out of the dining table to wipe her bleeding nose. I was so worried, but I couldn't do anything but await my dad's arrival. Eventually, he did. After six months, my mom had gotten worse. He was shocked to his bones when he saw her. My mom had tried to act tough and smile it off, but I refused. I told my dad everything and he panicked. He didn't even get to shower before he quickly took her to the hospital. I remained at home, praying for my mom to get well. That night, my dad returned home alone, wearing the saddest expression I'd ever seen in him. He sank into the chair beside me and buried his face in his palms. Your mom is dying. She has an incurable disease. My whole world stopped for a moment when he said that. It was like I suddenly went deaf and unable to understand anything. With no idea what to do, I burst into tears. My dad was also crying as he hugged and comforted me. The next day when we went to see my mom, she'd changed so much that I could barely recognize her. I felt so sad as it hadn't even been 24 hours and she already looked that way. I cried even more, begging the doctors to save her, but they gave me a sympathetic look, telling me there was nothing to do at that point. I refused to leave her side. I remained on her bed, hugging her weak body to myself until she suddenly went cold. My mom died in my hands. I screamed and shook her violently, but she didn't wake up. I saw my entire world crumble before me. My dad held me as we cried. After her funeral, life was even tougher for me. My dad was barely home, and whenever he managed to be home, I would see him crying secretly. It hurt my already broken heart. There was no one to comfort me, and my dad was doing badly. I wanted to comfort him, but I hadn't even been able to do so for myself. Slowly, we began to grow apart. For a whole year, I barely saw my dad or talked to him. I returned to school, distancing myself from everyone and being gloomy all the time. My friends tried to help, but they all left because I continued pushing them away. I was alone. On my mom's first death anniversary, my grandparents, uncles, and aunts were present. I also noticed a particular lady who kept clinging to my dad. 
It was even weirder when he didn't push her off. Instead, he looked so comfortable. After that day, I tried to talk to him about the lady. I was 16 and still a child to him, but it didn't mean I wasn't sensible. The time finally came when he returned from a business trip. Dad, I'd like to talk to you about something. He seemed uninterested, but I went on. I boldly asked him if something was going on between him and the lady, and the answer I got wasn't what I expected. Or, I'd expected it but hoped I wouldn't get it. She's my girlfriend. She's been good to me and has taken good care of me since your mother's death. I plan to marry her. Dad, it's not even been two years since mom died. This isn't fair. Who are you to lecture me on what's right and wrong? I'm your dad, Liz. Don't forget that. I was heartbroken when he stormed off. Two months after that discussion happened, he brought the lady home and introduced her as Melinda and also the new lady of the house. She began to visit frequently until she finally moved in three months later. I didn't like Melinda. She avoided me and I did the same, but I saw her being cruel to the house workers whenever my dad wasn't watching and I knew she was no good. My dad didn't care about me anymore. I hated how everything was going. It all felt so disrespectful to my late mom. For the first four months Melina lived with us, I ignored her. But she soon began showing me the cruelty she showed to the workers. She would lock the door and refuse me from going into my room. She would beat me for no reason. She also began making food unavailable for me. I was only allowed to eat once a day. But our kind maids were sweet enough to leave some food in the storage room which I would sneak into and eat at night. Melinda was pure evil. She didn't hide it when my dad was home and that hurt me even more. He watched as she mistreated me without doing anything about it. He would sit and listen to my loud cries when Melinda beat me up. He even accepted when she suggested that I drop out of high school. I stopped going to school and was at home, doing nothing other than receiving lashes and insults. Soon, Melinda announced that she was pregnant. I saw how my dad lifted and spun her around excitedly, not knowing he wasn't the owner of the child. Melinda was cheating on him. Many times, I'd caught her speaking to her boyfriend over video calls. I also heard when she told him she was pregnant for him and planned to pin the child on my dad. Her aim was to marry my dad, get him to will his properties to her son, and kill him. I didn't tell my dad. I didn't have evidence, and I knew he wouldn't believe the words of my mouth. He continued believing and trusting her blindly until she gave birth to her son. Six months later, I overheard her planning to make my dad will the properties and also poison him, so I decided to step in. I reached out to my aunt, who had no idea what was happening in the house because my dad wasn't on speaking terms with her. She hadn't supported his relationship with Melinda, and that angered my dad. When I told her everything, she was livid. But I begged her to be silent about it. I wanted Melinda to leave with her son. With my aunt's help, we got a doctor. I managed to get a few hair strands of my dad's hair and that of Melinda's son. A DNA test was done, and I got evidence that my dad wasn't the owner of the child. In anger and without thinking, I confronted Melinda, showing her the result. It was a stupid move. She beat me up and took the test result from me, tearing it to pieces. In order to eliminate me finally, she lied to my dad that I'd tried to stab her in her sleep. I'm too scared to live in the same house with her. Send the cursed child away. My heart shattered when my dad pushed me out of his house and his life, believing Melinda's words. I went over to my aunt's. She was disappointed in me, but also in my dad, who she thought was stupid. We let my grandparents in on everything, and they stormed my dad's house. After much back and forth, he agreed to have a DNA test. Of course, Melinda tried to convince him, but it was impossible. My grandparents forced him. Until the results came out, my aunt and grandparents lived with us. Melinda was visibly disturbed, but there was nothing she could do because my aunt took everyone's phones. She couldn't contact her boyfriend, neither could she leave the house. Three days later, the result was finally out. Of course, my dad wasn't the father, he was broken. My aunt wasn't going to let it slide. She pounced on Melinda and began beating her up until the lady finally confessed her plans on camera. She told everyone she didn't love my dad but was there to get his money. According to her, my dad had dated her younger sister years back and had broken her heart, so she came for revenge for her late sister. She and her boyfriend had planned this all along to make my dad fall in love with her pin a pregnancy on him, and have him will his assets to their son before they killed him. She already had bruises all over, and her eyes were swollen. My dad couldn't speak. He let us handle everything. 
My aunt forced Melinda to the police station where they made her reveal where her boyfriend was. She did, and he was arrested alongside her. Before they were taken to court, my aunt paid the cops to torture both of them for days. On the day of their hearing, they were both nearly unrecognizable. Melinda's face was all swollen, a bandage supporting her right hand, limping on her left leg and having another bandage around her ankle. Melinda was charged with attempted murder and fraud, while her boyfriend was tagged as her accomplice. They both got 15 years imprisonment each with no fine or bail option. I was impressed. After we left the court and went home, my dad apologized to everyone in tears. I found comfort in her. After my wife's death, I was nearly depressed. I feel so bad for everything. Please, forgive me. Liz, I understand if you never forgive me, but I'll never stop apologizing for mistreating you. It was hard to forgive him, but we did. As for Liz's child, we sent him to an orphanage because we couldn't let him live with us. My dad truly didn't stop apologizing. Even though I'd forgiven him, I felt relieved that he was living with the guilt of what he did. I understand that my mom's death affected him deeply, but it also affected me, and he should have been there for me. I don't hate him, but I feel rewarded seeing him live in guilt. I'm not a bad daughter, am I?